Welcome to this edition of our devotions, coming to you from Church of the Palms in Sarasota, Florida. My name is Melvin Christian. I'm one of the visitation pastors here at the church. Let us prepare for God's word by listening to a musical selection. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to present your word today. I pray that everything I say will be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Our gospel reading today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 11 through 13. And it reads as follows. The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, asking him for a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them and getting into the boat again, he went across to the other side. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was in elementary school, a magician used to come by every year around Halloween. This magician performed tricks such as pulling a rabbit out of a hat, making a handkerchief, a quarter disappear and turning fire into oranges and several other things that drew oohs and eyes from us kids who had no understanding of how they performed such amazing acts. By the time I reached the sixth grade, uh, these magical tricks were not as exciting as they were a few grades earlier. By that time, some of us, especially those of us who had older siblings who could tell us the secrets behind the tricks, understood how the tricks were formulated to create an illusion of reality. In Acts chapter 8, verses 9 through 24, there is a story of a man by the name of Simon who wandered the streets of Samaria, amazing people by his magic. The Bible calls him a sorcerer or magician. The magic that Simon used was illusions and tricks. So there was nothing special about it. The people of Samaria considered Simon to be a great man. 
And some said of his magic, this man is the great power of God. However, when Philip came to Samaria, that all changed. Simon had been a man who could pull cheap tricks enough to fool and amuse the people. But there were some things he could not do. Simon could not perform miracles. However, Philip had the miraculous power to heal the sick. He had real power from God. People could tell the difference between what was real and what was fake. And soon even Simon, the sorcerer, became a Christian. Our text opened with Jesus having an encounter with the Pharisees. And the Pharisees came forth and began to question Jesus, seeking a sign from heaven. Jesus was frustrated by their question. The Bible says, and he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. This sigh was a sign of grief and frustration. Jesus was profoundly troubled by the Pharisees' inability to believe. Jesus was probably saying, I'm not a magician, and I'm not here for your amusement or to do politics. Jesus had performed many miracles. He had healed the sick, cast out demons, raised the dead, forgiven the power of sin, and performed other miraculous acts. Many of the religious leaders of the day made accusations that the miracles of Jesus were due to magic. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 24, they chose to accuse Jesus of being demonically controlled by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. The Pharisees had witnessed Jesus deal with every form of human malady, yet they still wanted more. Like many previous occasions, the Pharisees came to Jesus to discredit and tempt him. As was often the case, the Pharisees were never far from Jesus and typically sought ways to criticize and deny him. This encounter was no different. Quite literally, they were demanding more proof that Jesus was in fact the Messiah. All of the previous encounters had failed to convince them of his deity. They refused what they had experienced in the past and demanded more. Jesus came to earth fully God and fully man. While he possessed all the deity of God, he also possessed the attributes of man. I would think that he grew weary at times from the continual harassment of the Pharisees. No doubt this must have been discouraging at times. But through it all, Jesus never wavered. He continued to honor his father and minister to mankind. The power of God to do miracles was not the same as the tricks of a magician. The power of God is real, and the power of a magician is fake. Though perhaps entertaining and innocent, if everyone understands that it is meant for innocent purposes. C.S. Lewis states in his book, Miracles, that a Christian must not only accept but rejoice in miracles as a testimony of the unique personal involvement of God in creation. Jesus knew the unbelieving Pharisees would never be satisfied. If he agreed to their demands at this time, they would continue to demand more signs in the future. Unfortunately, 
Today, many continue to possess the same attitude and doubt like the Pharisees. The Lord has proven without doubt his deity, being without question our Savior and Redeemer, and yet some fail to believe. They want to bargain with him, demanding signs and miracles if they are to believe. And let me repeat that they want to bargain with the Lord. They still want signs and miracles to make them believe. Salvation is a miracle of God's grace, but it is received by faith, not through the performance of miracles. Let's not be among those who are so intent on finding God's signs that we miss what he is actually doing before our very eyes. Anyone who lacks the faith to believe will not be convinced by another miracle. We must respond to the Lord's offer of salvation by faith. His sacrifice on Calvary was enough. And his word is true. His sacrifice on Calvary was enough. And his word is true. Let us pray. Thank you for your grace and mercy, dear Father. Help us to realize the deity of Jesus and to understand that he has everything to do with the miracles that surround us every day. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.